The world of Dune is about as dense and complicated as sci-fi gets. It's no surprise then that Denis Villeneuve's adaptation had to trim a few scenes to keep things moving along. Many characters in the Dune franchise could be considered villains, and Pieter de Vries is easily one of the worst offenders. The twisted Mentat is a servant of House Harkonnen, and in his role as a biological computer, guides Baron Vladimir Harkonnen in the plot to destroy House Atreides and seize control of Arrakis. As part of his duties, de Vries is also routinely tasked with sourcing information from enemies and planning assassination schemes. Considering all that, it isn't all that surprising that a scene was planned that would showcase some of these less desirable qualities. In an exclusive interview with Looper, actor David Desmolchin revealed that he shot a torture scene that didn't make the final cut. However, it isn't clear whether this was simply to show the type of person De Vries is, or if it was part of a discarded subplot that was deemed no longer necessary. Desmolchin explained, there was a scene in which I was torturing a prisoner that didn't make it. Dave Batista and I were in it, and it was a very short scene, but I really enjoyed shooting that. Dr. Wellington Yue is one of the most important characters in Dune. Not only is he the personal physician of Duke Leto Atreides, but his actions also set the main conflict of the story in motion. A longtime servant to House Atreides, Yue betrays his masters at the behest of Baron Vladimir Harkonnen. In Dune Part 1, he lowers the defenses of the Atreides stronghold in Erekin. This allows Harkonnen forces and the Sardaukar to launch a devastating attack, ultimately ending in the Duke's death. Along with that of Yue and numerous senior officials, from both the Atreides and Harkonnen houses. The reason for Yue's betrayal is revealed to be a last-ditch effort by the Doctor to free his wife from the grip of the Harkonnens. They take her apart like a doll. I will buy her freedom, and you are the price. Pieter de Vries has kidnapped and tortured the woman, so Yue believed the only way to free her was to betray House Atreides and follow de Vries's instructions. In a scene that was removed from the theatrical release, Yue has a conversation with Lady Jessica and becomes emotional when discussing his wife. This would have added some extra depth to his character and helped explain more of the motivation for why he was willing to betray his close friends. Duncan Idaho is an important figure within the world of Dune. He takes on several vital roles for House Atreides and is steadfastly loyal to Duke Leto, Paul, and Lady Jessica. A skilled swordmaster and valiant warrior, he protects Paul and Lady Jessica after the Harkonnen and Sardaukar attack Erekin and then gives his life to aid their escape. Prior to all that, however, Duncan acted as an ambassador and close ally to the Fremen of Arrakis, and if an earlier draft of the Doom Part 1 script had been used, viewers may very well have seen Duncan much earlier than they do in the theatrical cut. This version of the script featured a sequence referred to by the crew as the Duncan Drop, a partially shot scene in which the master fighter lands on Arrakis from a dropship. Duncan would have arrived on the planet in style before seeking out the Fremen on behalf of House Atreides, providing a dramatic introduction to the character. According to the behind-the-scenes book, The Art and Soul of Dune, the scene was ultimately removed because Villeneuve felt it strayed too far from the novel. Like Duncan Idaho, Gurney Halleck is a loyal soldier within House Atreides. A master swordsman and skilled fighter, he trained under some of the very best warriors in the known universe as a youngster. He was also partly responsible for training Paul in combat, and sat as a member of Duke Leto's war council. Let's your suck at the abundance of the seas. And the treasure hid in the sand. Gurney manages to survive the attack that led to the fall of House Atreides, joining a gang of smugglers on Arrakis. Gurney is also a skilled musician. In the Dune novels, he shows a particular liking for the Balaset, a fictional stringed instrument. According to Josh Brolin and director Denis Villeneuve, a scene was filmed where Gurney played the Balaset and sang a beautiful song. Despite everyone enjoying the moment, however, it had to be cut. Brolin told Sci-Fi, We did the singing scene with the Balaset and Hans Zimmer had written a really nice piece. It was kind of like Lou Reed's meets Tom Waits meets me. Villeneuve also spoke with the outlet, revealing that he really didn't want to remove the scene. He said, Josh was awesome, but I couldn't, for several reasons, put it in part one. Still, Gurney was destined to get his moment. In Doom Part 2, he is reintroduced strumming on a balaset as he harvests spice with his fellow smugglers. The opening sequence of Doom Part 1 is just one of the many differences between the film and novel. The book begins on the House Atreides' home planet, Caladan, as Duke Leto accepts an invitation by the Emperor to take over stewardship of Arrakis. This provides some background to Paul and the rest of the Atreides family, as well as giving the reader a wider understanding of the fictional universe. In contrast, Doom Part 1 opens with Charney narrating the history of the Harkonnen Regiment on Arrakis, demonstrating the harsh realities of life on the planet. Why did the Emperor choose this path? 
And who will our next oppressors be? In an interview with IndieWire, Doom Part 1 co-screenwriter Eric Roth explained how the film almost had an entirely different intro altogether. His original script called for an opening that showed Arrakis being created, but director Denis Villeneuve vetoed it. Why? Not because he didn't like it, he thought it would be too expensive to film, Roth said. Because I'm adventurous, I started the movie with what would seem to be Genesis and God created, and you think you're seeing the formation of the Earth and its dune with wild animals, things you've never seen. The nature of Doom Part 1 means that little is shown of Paul's early life, and there are a few notable training scenes scattered throughout the movie, which gives some indication of how he learned to fight and understands the teachings of the Bene Gesserit. Apart from fleshing out the character, these scenes also provide a way for viewers to become more accustomed to what life is like in the fictional universe. Yet, other scenes showing Paul's training were cut from the final version of the film. Lady Jessica actor Rebecca Ferguson posted a behind-the-scenes image to her Instagram that showed her character and Paul fighting with a knife as she instructs him in the weirding way, the martial art of the Bene Gesserit. Ferguson said that she loved this particular scene, which was ultimately removed. Despite it adding extra meaning to Paul's fight with Jameis, she captioned the post, Always an odd feeling when a scene you love doesn't make the cut. Hope one day this one makes it out to you guys. One of the earlier scenes in Doom Part 1 sees Paul and Leto Atreides walking through a cemetery on their home planet of Caladan. The pair initially argue as the young heir wants to travel to Arrakis on a scouting mission with Duncan Idaho, with his father insisting he travel with the rest of House Atreides. It is in this moment that the Duke also reveals to Paul the danger that taking over Arrakis will put them all in. As Leto explains, the new arrangement will cause more conflict between them and House Harkonnen, which have been taking spies from Arrakis for decades. In an early draft of the script, this part of the story would have been even longer, involving the father and son duo traveling together to the graveyard. The cemetery was a initially intended to be on a piece of land in the middle of a lake. The cutscene featured Paul and Leto swimming to the island cemetery using specially adapted wetsuits before they begin a conversation that was very similar to that found in the final movie, although this too was rewritten after the swimming portion was removed. Javier Bardem's character Stilgar plays an important role in Doom Part 1 as the leader of a large group of Fremen on Arrakis. A staunch defender of his people and culture, he first appears in the movie when Duncan Idaho introduces him to House Atreides. Won't you stay? We would honor you. Honor requires that I be elsewhere. Stilgar later provides sanctuary to Paul and Lady Jessica after the attack from House Harkonnen that leaves Duke Leto dead and House Atreides in ruins. But it turns out that the initial plan was for viewers to see Stilgar earlier in the movie. The art and soul of Dune suggests that Stilgar was originally going to appear in the desert as House Atreides arrives on Arrakis. He would have looked up to see the Highliner appear overhead before landing on the planet. In an interview with Collider, director Denis Villeneuve explained that he's sometimes saddened by having to remove certain things he likes, seemingly referencing this particular scene. He said, There was a little moment with Stilgar in the desert that I'm still mourning, but when I try to put it back in the film, it deflates the momentum. Glasu Raban is a violent and sadistic member of House Harkonnen. As the nephew of the Baron, he acts as something of an enforcer and is known across Arrakis as a cruel and vicious despot. How can the Emperor take everything we've built? As such, it makes sense that Dave Bautista filmed scenes of Raban intimidating other characters, including David Desmochin's Piter Dave Rees. Unfortunately, fans of the movie are unlikely to ever see this, as it was removed from the theatrical release. Speaking to Collider, Bautista divulged some details about the missing footage, indicating that it was likely cut because it impacted the overall pace of the film. He said, I had a scene in the first film with Dave de Smolchin where I was just intimidating his character, and it was very subtle, but I wanted that for selfish reasons because I loved Dave so much. Batista later went on to say that he was disappointed about the scene not appearing in the final version of the film, but that he understood that these decisions are for the filmmakers. While Dr. Wellington Yue betrays House Atreides and sets off the chain of events that leads to the death of Duke Leto, he is not a villain. In fact, he is intensely loyal to his house, only working against them in a desperate effort to save his wife. Several deleted scenes demonstrate his support for the family and Paul in particular. This includes a scene where the two discuss life on Arrakis and how Spice is ever-present on the planet. One early draft of the script included an entire conversation between Yue and Paul, in which the Doctor pleads with him to learn everything about the Fremen as soon as possible. He also hands him a religious text known as the Orange Catholic Bible, explaining that it was once a treasured item owned by his wife. The scene was likely removed for pacing reasons, although it took away the opportunity to flesh out Yue's character further and explain why his betrayal was so painful. 
Choosing how to open Doom Part 1 was apparently among the most difficult tasks for Villeneuve and the screenwriters. Frank Herbert's Dune novels provides exposition for the events that are about to unfold in its opening pages, but film adaptations usually don't have the luxury of spending time setting the scene before jumping into the action. Yet, they do have to give the audience some idea of what is going on. Throughout the writing process for Doom Part 1, several different openings were proposed. One of the earliest versions resembles the way that David Lynch's 1984 movie begins, with Princess Irulan explaining the setting and politics of Arrakis. The planet is Arrakis, also known as Dune. The 2018 draft script for Doom Part 1 featured Reverend Mother Mohiem, filling the audience in on the history of Herbert's fictional world. She explains the roles of the various factions within the Empire, and the importance of spice to the wider universe. It wasn't clear whether this scene was ever recorded, however, or if it was cut before filming began. 